World War II, thousands of American civilians were captured by the Japanese in the Philippines. Many of them spent more than three years in prison camps. Hundreds were children and teenagers, and this is what their life was like. When the war started, I was 17 years old. I was with my mother and sister living in Cebu City. And I was a stu high school student. My sister was four years younger than I. And my mother was teaching school. It's a, a, a building that was an old Spanish prison, probably built in the late 1500s with a high wall around it, indescribably dirty filthy. So that's the way things were. And then the Japanese sentries were always walking along the top of the wall, looking down on us every night, every hour. On the hour, the Japanese soldiers would come in at night after we, we were, we were in the, the cells, and they would shine their flashlights on us and count us. Eventually, we found ourselves in the largest uh, civilian camp in the Philippines, Santa Tomas internment camp in Manila. There were 146 of us arrived there, and it seemed such a huge place. We hadn't seen the beginning of this camp because we weren't there the first year when the camp was being organized. I was in the Iloilo camp of 100 people, then moved to Santa Tomas with 3,700. The uh, Japanese entered the city on the uh, 2nd of January, and then I think within a few days we learned that they were being taken to, uh, excuse me, to uh, uh, Santa Tomas University for internment. And uh, so within a few days we knew that all Americans would be taken there, and that it would just be a matter of time before we were taken there. And. Uh, About um, a week or so of this, we got a call early in the morning that they were evacuating all the women and children from the mines, from the Balatok mines and the Benguet mines, and sending them down to Manila. Mother was told to get a pack enough for uh, whatever, a week or so to be in Manila. And so she packed um, an evening gown and her tennis racket. Trip down on the bus was exciting a, a number of times because they, the Japanese were strafing and they were flying overhead. And I was in a um, room with about uh, 40 women and, and children. Classrooms were turned into, in effect, dormitories and, uh, or sleeping quarters. And they were crowded, no question. Uh, a room about uh, uh, 30 feet by 30 feet might have 20 people in it. Yeah. First in turn, there were some 700 men in the gymnasium with us, and I think there were four toilets. And they, that kind of ratio is brought home to you much more than uh, some of the more esoteric anxieties of, of physical violence and so on. Uh, waiting in line for the use of the john is a, a trying occupation. There were three meals a day. There was cornmeal mush in the morning. While that lasted, then it was rice mush. Um, then there was a lunch uh, meal, and then the main meal at, uh, at dinner time. And um, all kinds of people in Santa Tomas. It just wasn't one group of people. Um, we had teachers, we had farmers, we had college professors, we had bankers, we had accountants, we had, you know, people who, heavens knows, maybe they were gamblers and prostitutes. We had everything you can imagine. We had entertainers. And these are the people that, that kind of rounded up. They were executives. They, they, they knew what to do, and they, they got organized. They said, we, they can't treat us like this. We're going to form a committee. We're going to go to the, the Japanese and insist that they treat us. And we have to get showers, and we don't want malaria, and we don't want disease, and we're going to get our nurses and doctors organized. And, and because we had a very nice civilian commandant, please don't ask me his name, because I don't remember. Um, 
they, uh, we, they were allowed to, to get an organization in place. And it worked. Everybody worked. Uh, everyone over the age of 12 had to do something. And if you were under the age of 12, you had to clean a dustpan or you had dustpan duty. And Every woman and teenage girl who, was, who did not have a regular camp job was assigned to vegetable duty. Unfortunately, there were also teachers interned, and so <laughs> school began in short, <laughs> very quickly we were all in school, and our schoolrooms were behind buildings, just anywhere. And later, we had sports. We had quite a bit of sports, um, almost entirely self-organized. We, we So the teenagers in camp were living the time and the moment. And for many, for much of the time, it was one long summer camp with some school. The teachers were there. But we had sports, we had games, we had cliques. Told the Japanese would hurt us if we didn't bow. We, we tried to just stay away from them. Uh, we were not supposed to watch air raids. They were, we were strictly forbidden to look out the window during air raids. Of course, we all did. <laughs> but a Japanese soldier saw me. And for about five or 10 minutes, I looked down the barrel of a rifle at a very angry Japanese soldier. And yes, it uh, seemed very threatening. <laughs> uh, the third year of internment, the uh, situation changed, the food supplies decreased, the contact with the outside was dis discontinued, stopped altogether. And um, so that uh, uh, gradually in the third year of internment, the, the uh, quantity and the quality of the food declined until for about the last six months it became almost a starvation diet. And uh, the last few months was nothing but a starvation. Uh, rice with a little, a few vegetables, uh, very little to supplement it. The women who looked so tired and disheveled and had to stop caring about their looks because they were so tired and weak. I said there was no milk, no meat, no fruits, hardly any vegetables, and really no salt, no sugar. It was very, very difficult time. My father, who weighed 155 pounds going in, uh, weighed 84. Every morning I would wonder if I'd look at him, he was pale blue-gray. Is he still alive? But he lived in 94. <laughs> the, the ravages of malnutrition hit us all. Uh, and primarily uh, beriberi, the uh, lack of vitamin B. Uh, I did not developed very, very until the very end. My feet began to, and ankles began to swell. But you would see all these men mostly walking around. They could hardly put one step ahead of, of uh, one step ahead of one another and they would be walking on these very swollen ankles and, and, and feet and their hands would swell. In some cases they had dry berry berry where they would just shrivel up with wet beriberi, many of them, of course, the fluid would accumulate and they would die of cardiac beriberi. My dad died of beriberi. I remember one of my greatest pleasure was just sucking a warm stone and it tasted good. There was a sense of dirt and mineral on it. Maybe I was getting something from that early in the morning and she would pick grass and she was boiling the grass and she was she would uh, pick she said what was the, the fresh uh, grass and then she would her family would boil it and they would drink the green water it was it was getting very very desperate just forgot to feed us and uh, the death rate then began to climb and it, the pictures can look like Dachau but uh, 
It wasn't Dachau yet. Another two months, and we would have been goners, uh, most of us. But as it is, uh, the cavalry came just in time. Santo Tomas University, Jap prison camp, opens its gates to 3,700 internees. Hard-driving American forces sweeping the enemy from Manila, free men, women, and children held prisoners during the three years of Jap occupation. One of General MacArthur's first missions is to call upon the happy internees. During the general's visit, Jap forces still in the city train their guns on the university. Many of the helpless internees were wounded by the enemy's fire. Of those liberated, the adults show all signs of malnutrition. Mothers and fathers fed their children most of the meager rations furnished by the enemy. Fuel for cooking and warmth is very scarce. But these undernourished heroes find strength to complete their tasks. Our children, but many of the parents have starved. A typical example of this is one of our most popular families, the Brooks family. There were four of them, father, mother, and two young boys, twins. The father, a few weeks ago, died of starvation. The mother was killed by a Jap shell. Barney? Curtis. Oh, you're Curtis. Well, Curtis, I guess you know how everybody in this camp feels about the swell way you fellas have taken your troubles here. Yeah. And, uh, Barney, I, that goes for you, too. You've been a couple of swell American boys, and all 3,700 of us want you to know about that. And this will all be just a bad dream to you after a while, boys. Yeah, I hope it'll be that way. Well, good luck to you, and I think that we can all say thanks to the American forces that came in here and liberated us before it got even worse than it was. Yeah. We were saved just in, liberated just in time, because if we had been in Santa Tomas maybe one or two months longer, I, we wouldn't have made it. first group out, we were on a lottery and we, we flew out on February 22nd. We were liberated on um, February 3rd and by February 22nd we were, we were on a truck. Shortly after liberation, they, we were still getting the rice mush we'd gotten before. But uh, I was, uh, each internee, as they got their rice mush, was handed a can of evaporated milk to go with the mush. And Harriet, I felt like the richest person on earth with that can of milk. That was all for me, all for breakfast, and the whole can. And I say, I, I looked at awe and wonder at that can of evaporated milk. I still do. <laughs> Changed. I was I was suddenly a little ghetto kid with running around in, in rags and starving with all, hundreds of friends or people my age in the same boat, and I it was it was marvelous because I didn't think that it was unusual. My parents were deprived. I was liberated, so to speak. So we went through camp, most of us I would say, in a different way than others. It was shocking to people who read about prison camps, a very normal existence. But I've talked to people from Auschwitz who were of the same age, and in the strange warped way, it was absolutely the same. Uh, your life is your life, and your friends are your friends, and the situation is the situation. Liberation saved these teenagers not only from starvation, but from extermination. In 1944, the Japanese War Ministry issued a standing order concerning all Allied prisoners. This document, on record at the U.S. National Archives, states, 
It is the aim not to allow the escape of a single one, to annihilate them all, and not to leave any traces.